So you have one of these now and you want to be cinematic. I'm going to show you how to be a YouTube god. When the DJI Pocket 3 came out, steady cam operators all over Hollywood were quaking in their boots because now you can be a Hollywood filmmaker. This thing has its own built-in gimbal and it shoots 10-bit 422. And you know what that means, don't you? Of course you do. You'll be making big budget movies in no time. This alone isn't going to make you a great cinematographer. There are some things that you need to add to this to make it really good. So I'm gonna show you what those are today. Now the first thing you need to make this cinematic, to make you a cinematographer is this. You cannot be a good cinematographer without one of these on YouTube. YouTube will not take you seriously if you don't wear a hat. Okay, seriously now. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Now, the first thing on here is the screen is not that big, okay? I mean, it's, it's bigger than the last one, but it's still very, very small. So it's not big enough for really seeing what you're gonna get. So you're gonna have to get a bigger monitor. I mean, this is what everybody does on YouTube when you have a camera. You need a real monitor to really see what you're doing. So you need one of these, okay? Now, this one here is good, it's nice and big, but it doesn't record. So it's even better to get something that actually records because you wanna record externally. Losers record internally into a camera. Winners record externally. So this is a ninja, but this is not good enough. No, you don't want a ninja, you want a Shogun because this is bigger and it has SDI. You're not a good filmmaker if you don't use SDI. Forget HDMI, SDI is the way to go. And I'm gonna show you how to get into that in a minute. So you need a Shogun, all right? So for this to be really serious, you need a Shogun. Now, the other thing is this battery sucks. This battery is only gonna work for a short amount of time. So you need good battery power that lasts you all day. So now you need a DTAP battery, okay? This is what Hollywood people use is DTAP batteries. So how do you get this power into here? Well, for that, you need a D-tap to USB adapter. You plug that into here, and then here's the USB. And that goes into your, now you make sure it's the right voltage, because this is five, five volts, but here you go. USB-C adapter from D-tap. Now you can run this thing all day and not worry about power. Now, how do you get the video out of here? There's no video external uh, jacks to get video out. This thing will wirelessly transmit its images and videos to your cell phone. Take your USB-C to HDMI adapter and now you can output from your cell phone to a really good recorder. All right, next up is audio. You are not a good filmmaker and you're not to be taken seriously if you don't use XLRs. You need a bunch of XLR cables to be taken seriously as a filmmaker. So you need a bunch of XLR cables to work with this. So how do you get all this to work with this little thing? I'll show you. What does every good YouTuber do? Alrighty then. Now we're ready to get cinematic here. First you gotta build up a cage and you get your DJI Pocket 3. Let me turn this around here. With my dual handles, you need your dual handles to make this work. Now I could use a quarter 20 thread, but then for that you need the extension, which I don't want to have to use. I just clamp it into place with my little mini super clamp here, which I made a video about. Now this thing can, now you bring in your mat box. That's another thing, you need a mat box, all right? You don't want flares to go into your lens. So you need this mat box to protect the lens so the sunlight doesn't go right into the lens. That's why professional Hollywood people use matte boxes. So you need one of these, okay? All right, so we have our camera in here. Now, now we get our cell phone and we attach that to the appropriate cell phone clamp here. So now we can get the signal from the DJI Pocket 3 into the cell phone, okay? Now the cell phone obviously needs a USB-C plug, which then goes to HDMI, which then can go to your recorder. Also, YouTube will not take you seriously if you don't use a shotgun mic. You need a shotgun mic. I've got two of them on here, okay? I got my stupid little one that most people use, but if you really want to take it seriously, you need one with a furry thing on it. This is so important. You need a big furry thing to be taken seriously and lots of XLR cable. You are not, again, you, you, people will laugh at you if you don't use XLR cables. All right, so the XLR from the shotgun mic goes into a converter. That converter then converts into a signal that can be recorded in your recording device. All right, so here we have our big DTAP battery so we can shoot all day long. Here is the DTAP adapter, which then adapts through the adapter into USB-C. So now that can be plugged into the DJI Pocket 3. Now, if I turn this around here, you can see I have the 
prerequisite mandatory dual XLR inputs. This is really, really important. You need dual XLR inputs to be taken seriously in Hollywood, especially the YouTube Hollywood, okay? <clears throat> All right, so here we have our, our uh, shotgun mic. We have our monitor, which I suggest you use a recording monitor. We have the cell phone, which receives the signal from the DJI with the uh, USB-C to HDMI adapter. We have our battery pack, which we can run this thing all day long. We have our dual handles. This is so important. And of course, the matte box to shade from the sunlight. So we are ready to go out into the world with our DJI Pocket 3. Now you're ready to be taken seriously as a YouTuber making your videos. This is how to be cinematic. Okay, this is so important uh, to get this stuff. It's really important. You spend a bit of money, but if you want to be cinematic, if you want to call yourself a cinematographer or a director of photography, that's DP in Hollywood terms, you need stuff like this, all right? All right. I'm just joking. This is, a, okay. <laughs> Obviously, Marcus is joking here. It's amazing how uptight some of these DJI people are. Uh, DJI, I keep saying DGI, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, um, I wanted to tell the world about this camera in March, because I was doing a video on tracking cameras and I wanted to include this one because I knew this was gonna be probably the best one of all the ones that I was testing. And I kept waiting and they said it's gonna be out in April, so I actually held up that video for a month, but it never came out, so I had to make the video and then, and then months went by and months went by and it just never came out. So I got really frustrated, but I was hoping that maybe it would. But I knew this was gonna be a good tracking camera. Really, really uh, excited about it. When it finally came out, uh, I was like the last one to tell the world about it, uh, but I knew it was gonna be good for several reasons. And it is, it is. Now I know I made a couple of videos saying it wasn't that great. Uh, it is good for what it is. The stabilization on this is really good. If you want a stabilized camera that you walk and talk with or that follows you around with tracking, this is, this is a really, this is probably the best choice for anybody who's a consumer who can't afford a lot, something you fit in your pocket. So that's all good. When I mean, we've already established all that. Now, the, when the, the thing that I like, which most people balk at, but I like cameras like the RX100 that you just, take out of the box, turn it on, push record, and you get great footage right out of the box. Even though it can, it has log, it has raw, it has all that stuff. I don't wanna have to dig in deep and fiddle with it and do two days of experimenting to get it to look good. Don't you want a camera you just turn it on and the factory's already got it figured out to look great? Well, if you turn this thing on, factory settings suck. It looks horrible. You have to go into the menu and you gotta do some digging to get it to look good. And I'll tell you what those settings are. You have to go into pro mode. You go into image adjustment, you custom, and then you take sharpness down to minus two and noise reduction minus one, okay? Then you go into color and you go D-log. And if you're going out in the bright sunlight, you need to go into exposure. Even though it says auto, you, you still have minus 0.7 EV because your, your face is gonna be blown out if you're in bright sunlight. So I'll, I suggest always have it set at minus 0.7 EV. And uh, that's, those are the three things. Even though the exposure says auto, it still needs to be minus 0.7 EV, sharpness minus two, uh, grain minus one, and D-log. That's what makes you get good footage on this. And as far as D-log, you have to go into your uh, editing app, obviously, and uh, use the right LUT for that, or just at least turn up the saturation. The gimbal really is only there. You, you, don't, you don't need the gimbal for walking and talking, okay? What the gimbal is really for is when you have it like this, and you're walking around, and it's tracking you, and it goes up and down, and it has a pan tilt zoom. No, it doesn't zoom, it has a pan tilt. Uh, but it, that's what this is really for. The internal stabilization is good enough to stabilize this thing, just like the, 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 the action cameras. They don't have a gimbal and they stabilize just as good. I hate how they make you go through, uh, you know, going on their website and registering, getting an account, a password, having to use their apps and stuff. It's just annoying. I like cameras, you just turn it on, you don't have to do any adjusting, even, even though you can do adjusting, and it's good. It just looks great right out of the camera. I love that. I mean, I'm obviously capable of doing, you know, fine-tuning and adjustments, but 
don't, wouldn't you want something that, I mean, you're just excited like a kid. You open up the box, you pull it out, you push your cord and it looks great. That, that's awesome. Like, why do they give you horrible settings from the factory? I mean, if they should give you like the best settings. And then if you want to downgrade to lower resolution and, you know, less memory and all that, then you can do that. But they should give you the best right out of the box. Anyway, that's just me. Okay. So, uh. So yes, for the typical YouTuber that wants a small, somewhat affordable thing that they can fit in their pocket and has great stabilization, pretty good sensor, this is a really good thing to have. I don't think it's gonna revolutionize the filmmaking world, although everybody says it is or thinks it is. I have a feeling though those people are, have got a free one of these from DJI, but anyway, it's great to have as just something, to, you know, if you're just traveling and you wanna whip something out real quick and get a nice smooth shot. Nice to have. So anyway, um, <laughs> I hope my videos entertain you because I'm really about more, not just education, but entertainment. I mean, photography should be fun. And that's what this channel is really about is having fun. So don't take my stuff too seriously, guys. All right, I will see you in the next video. Bye.